So thank you, Vice Mayor, for allowing me. I am, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And I really am uh, honored to serve as this year's president of the National Black Caucus of Local Elected Officials. It uh, comes with quite a few perks that are great in terms of the city of Nashville because we have an opportunity to host the summer conference. And uh, this is Quinta Martin, who is part of the local team who's been working uh, with the program that we have planned coming up. And uh, we were trying to think what it is that you all could do to assist us, and we do have a welcome reception uh, that's going to take place. As a matter of fact, Quinta has copies of several Is this ideas, I, ideas, or is this part about the reception? This is this is really a, a draft of the uh, program that we are uh, planning, and it gives you an at glance look of what would be uh, possible uh, that will take place um, during that time, and. Um, we have to have a welcome reception. Um, we're going to have a welcome dinner on Wednesday night for the board of directors. A welcome reception. Um, this is uh, Council Member Tanaka Virtue. She's also one of the chairs of the program committee for NBC Leo. And um, she and Jacoby Dow both are working with the program of that event. But this is the first time that anyone from Nashville or even Tennessee has served as president of NBC Leo. And I do think it's a great thing for us. Um, as we discussed at the council meeting on Tuesday, um, we've had an opportunity to present before the National League of Cities Board of Directors uh, appealing for them to come back to Nashville as that they were here during 2015 with their National Summit and um, and we did a great job in presenting that and they approved to come back in 2026 uh, for the National Summit. Thank you. Thank you for oh yeah, I mean really that, that's great because that's tens of millions of dollars that's going to come to this city for 2026 because while this may bring somewhere around where we're hoping she's got 250 people uh, that we we're looking they said 150 I was hoping for 400 um, this is going to bring the, the summit in 2026 will probably be close to 5,000 so when you think about them being 5,000 people being here for three, four days, hotel rooms, food, all of those kinds of things, it, it gets up there in terms of how much money is spent. So it's a big thing, and I'm excited. So um, um, I guess we should ask a couple of questions, or at least I had some questions. That's why I had, was really interested. So we want to help mm -hmm. make this a really good conference. This is. Um, I mean, I think it's a really big deal. And the fact that you're a national, you're the national chairperson of this thing is, is great. So um, one of the things that we had talked about is that uh, we all, whoever's around during that period of time, uh, we want to help or be volunteers or do whatever we can to be helpful. Uh, one idea is that we all <laughs> probably should register for the conference if that's okay. Absolutely. Um, and then um, we can attend different parts of it if that's all right. And then, but we also want to be, at this point, we want to be helpful and be of assistance in terms of how we can make this thing really, really special. Well, we do have to, we, according to NBC Leo and the draft uh, events that they put together, there's a president's uh, hospitality room every night. So we need to have people there welcoming the people to come uh, is one thing. The workshops that we have, we do want to have people involved. We will have an exhibit, and we've got uh, um, the president's reception, which is a big deal. Um, 
The platform that I am using for the year is Education, Equity, and Excellence, an Elevated Collective. And I basically chose that because of the uh, fact that Deion Sanders went to Jackson State and Eddie George at Tennessee State and knowing how, first of all, sports are automatic, diverse opportunities that uh, take place with uh, athletes all over this country. So if they don't know how to come together at any other time, they come together on a playing field. Can I answer? Just a soccer game that week. Like There's a soccer game then? Or? There's not. Okay, that's good. I'd like to add something yep. up sure. as well. We're featuring Nashville and the community, and everybody knows, outside of Nashville, knows Nashville, and they're excited about Nashville, and excited to come to Nashville. So when you say you want to help, part of our, um, not marketing, but part of our doing the event, we're going to be doing a lot of things that feature Nashville and the Nashville communities. So if you have something special, because we all have something special about our own community where we live. We like to include that in our packets, in our materials that we have around at the conference. We have um, the, one of the hospitality rooms that she talked about is Welcome to Nashville. So we'd like to have little things about different parts of Nashville all in the room, you know, just to help decorate in, in terms of giveaways and things like that. So, you know, anything that you all can donate, contribute, let us know about whatever point is in the right direction. We <coughs> love to feature your community in the, in the activities. So, Tony, you know you got to wear a hat. I will wear hats. I will be hospitable. Uh, and and it might be how <laughs> I'll get one mini purple. All right, so we got her role. Yes. Uh, but, I mean, for, for the rest of it. us, yes. and ask questions. So the rest of us, um, how do we... What's the best way for us to figure out how we can help? I mean, we can, we can look at some of these things and, um, and come back to you and say, okay, we can do some of this. But we all, I think it would probably be proper for all council members to be registered for the conference. And, and then if we can help volunteer, um, or if we can be guides, or if we can help with a program, or whatever that is. And that would, be, that would be great. Let me just say, we've got two tours. Uh, that we're doing. One is to uh, uh That was a request from our, one of our past presidents to do the Akaneerist uh, distillery okay. that's in Shevard. And then we, and those who don't want to go to the distillery, uh, we were going to have a HBCU tour and around the town. So you know, to get from Tennessee State to Fisk, Meharry, American Baptist College, and possibly Fort Negley and some other uh, sites that would be good. Uh, the city cemetery, if it's something that we want to talk about. So anyone who knows that history, has that history, might be good to, to be able to share. And the one that knows Nashville very well, Vice Mayor. Oh, me. <laughs> um, uh, would be good. Yeah. We also included uh, in the uh, agenda, we found out that they were doing a John Lewis Way March the week before, so it was suggested that they do it the weekend that we had NBC Leo, mm -hmm. and that way that would give them an option to participate in that. And we will do that at 8 o'clock between, you know, 8 and 10, <coughs> because then the bus leaves at 10 to go to Uncle Nearest. Okay. So, Yes, and if as a, regi uh, a registered uh, attendee of the of the uh, conference, you have the option to attend all of the workshops that will be held. And and the committee is doing a great job and luncheons as well. Mm -hmm. So you've got both football coaches coming, along with Dr. Glover and Dr. Hudson. Is that right? Yes. That ought to be very interesting. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason why I did that is because I think that, um, that that can change the trajectory of HBCUs, bringing those celebrity football uh, head coaches there. People know Nick Saban, and they know Alabama football. They don't know that they have a great public health program 
they know they got a good football team. They know Derrick Henry came from Alabama and Julio Jones. I mean, I could go on down the line, but that's what they know. Um, and I think that when people see that, you know, they brand the, the we know, University of North Carolina, it, they know them because of Michael Jordan and all of those wonderful basketball players. The same thing with Kentucky and so forth and so on. She didn't say Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee, I was going to say uh, <laughs> Bernard King, you know, that he was one during my time. And what's the other the guy that the plays now for, um, can't even think of his name, uh, Tavares, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Where does he play? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, oh, yeah. Does everybody know Candace Parker? I know that. They know Candace Parker. I know Candace Parker. Michael Eric Dyson, and Stacey Hey, Hey, Manning, of course. I'm not, you know, we can go. I was just seeing a little basketball. And, and yeah, Michael Eric Dyson is going to be our uh, speaker for breakfast. And we, we are still working on one other very prominent speaker, just waiting to hear from her. Well, we want to get, uh, I guess, what we'll do is um, we'll get the word out to everybody else. <clears throat> I'll try to figure out if people, if, if everybody's okay with going in and registering for And if there's thing. something specific that you want to do or anyone that they want to do, uh, please. Okay. Let us know. Um, so, uh, are you the, con are, who should we contact to work through all this? You can contact, uh... <laughs> Seneca? <laughs> you? <laughs> you? Council can, Member Hart? You can contact uh, Quinta Martin. Ms. Martin. Ms. She's basically served as a you know, go-to person, head, you know, the quarterback of all of it. Hey, Rosie, do you have Miss Martin's email address? I don't. Okay. Uh, so we'll probably need your, uh, if you can give that to Rosie and your cell phone number. Went to Martin at hotmail.com. Yeah, okay. At gmail.com, okay. I'm all sorry. Right. Well, we are trying to not announce it to everybody, but now you're going to get everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't give the phone number, but, you know. Is, is there a dot between uh, Quentin? No dot. No dot. Q and it's Q-U-I-N-T-A? Okay. M-A-R-T-I-N, all one word, at gmail.com. It would probably work better if they contact, they send the information to Rosie. Rosie can compile it for what whatever respective council member feel they want to contribute, and then um, it, it'll work its way up instead of <coughs> multiple uh, emails from council members. Well, we're really good at confusing everything, just sending it there. No, this, we're not confusing this. But we're not going to do no, that. This okay. is a national platform. We ain't, okay. we ain't doing it. We ain't doing it. We ain't doing it. We ain't doing it. We ain't to the yeah. registration, so there will be convenient okay. people. Right and actually, I think okay. Rosie already sent that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rosie's been doing NLC for a long time right. with us and making sure that we all are registered and taken very good care of. So, um, Well, I, I tell you what, Rosie, if you don't mind working with uh, Councilman Hurd and Ms. Martin and uh, Taneka and anybody else involved, and it may be, because this is about three months away. July 20th. Yeah, it's not that far away. Mm -hmm. And it might be that we can come up with some ideas about how council members can get involved mm -hmm. and then kind of have a, a sign-up sheet so you actually know who might be around and then who might be willing to do whatever. And I should say too that we're the final event of the conference will be the Jefferson Street Jazz and Blues Festival. Yeah, I saw that on there too. So there should be a lot of good stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And, and we can help in any way we want to do that, and that's why we asked you to come, so thank you. Ms. Martin, thank you for being here. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we want people to have a, a really good uh, and event. And if you have a relationship with the Tennessee Municipal League, that helps, too, because we want to make sure that we reach out to the regional uh, communities as well, municipalities, and have them involved, because this is a first for Tennessee and we don't want it to be the last. Okay. Well, we're, we're, um, I think we're I with you. I can share that with the town. If we, you send me anything, because we're members, right, as a city, I, I can share that, okay. ask them to share that, and maybe the County Services so Association, Ginger, too. what's your email, ginger.house or national.gov? There you go. Okay, we can call. do that. Okay. And right. I can share it and ask them. Any other questions? 
So, um, thank you both. Are you for all being excited? Here. Yes. Woo. Well, I know the um, the, the uh, commercial that they did asking them to come back for 2026. Basically, what we're doing this summer is just a precursor to what we actually have in um, the National Summit. Brett, you know we participated, and it was huge yeah. in 2015. And they have been talking about it ever since, so I know it will be bigger and better this time. Well, it's a, it is. It's a great entrance into the National League of Cities. We're going to talk about it in a little while again. But they're coming in 2026, right. but this is the first step. And uh, um, when uh, we were in uh, Washington promoting Nashville, um, there were people talking about the NBC Leo conference already. Right. And they were stopping me and saying we're looking forward to coming. And, uh, so it's a big deal. There will be a lot of important people coming into town for this thing. So we, we want to be helpful. Um, anything else? All right. Councilmember Hurt, Ms. Martin, thank you. Thank you. But I would say that the most important people are already here. Oh. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think, yeah, we were talking about Tanaka. It was you, right? Thanks, it, was, it, was, it was you, Vice President. It was me. All right, I, thank you. I wouldn't dare steal your thunder. Yeah, all right, whatever. Thank you so much. What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> all right, so let's go on to translation services. Uh, and that's primarily what the meeting was called for. So I'm going to turn it over to Council Member Welsh. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, my committee, the Human Services Committee, has been looking into how to um, expand translation and interpretation services metro-wide and how to get our Title VI program within Metro um, up to the standard where it needs to be so that we are in, in um, uh, accordance with federal guidelines. Um, and we have done some really great work and we are ready to present um, a, a formal proposal on how we see about Title VI, which I'll explain. But we also have some ideas um, about what we want to do in the immediate sense to increase our interpretation services um, that would require today voting on actually allocating the $25,000 that Council um, approved this year for interpretation and translation services. Um, we did um, a lot of research into different things, and we discovered that um, we can add Spanish closed captioning to council meetings um, for uh, three years for 18000 of that $25,000 budget. Um, that, that amount would also include the one piece of hardware that we need to have that closed captioning happen inside the chambers. This would be a contract that would give us 360 hours a year. Um, that would be more than we would need just for council meetings, but that would include any other meetings that would take place in chambers that would have a wide appeal, like say State of Metro or something else that we would also like to um, translate. Um, one of the hitches in that is that at this point, um, we looked into also getting um, running the Spanish translation on um, Nashville.gov and right this moment that is not feasible, but we have a phase two that we hope to do right after the beginning of the fiscal year, um, which would involve um, changing one of Metro's four streaming channels to one that is specifically for Spanish translation. And that would mean every meeting within Metro that is broadcast <coughs> on MNN would be on this channel translated into Spanish, interpreted into Spanish. Um, that will require um, some money we need to up our allocation for next year if we could by about another $50,000 so that we could purchase the hardware for that, but I think that that would be money well spent to have every meeting within Metro, Planning Commission, all those things have a dedicated Spanish translation station. Um, in addition to the Spanish closed captioning um, that we could start very quickly once this money is approved and we get that allocated because we have that relationship with Granicus, that could start um, relatively immediately and, and Slade could answer more questions on what immediate means in terms of government. Um, <laughs> but in addition to that, um, we can also um, purchase um, a simultaneous live interpretation tool that involves a wireless transmitter, receivers, and we'd have to purchase headsets separately. But that would allow an interpreter within chambers to talk into the transmitter and transmit wirelessly to people who are in meetings so they can hear a Spanish translation. This would really help us at this point with budget hearings because I know that um, Chair Allen would really like as many of the budget hearings as we can to be um, in this second language. And we know that we would not have the Spanish closed captioning up in place quickly enough for that to do, to, for that to happen. 
Um, but if we purchase this equipment, um, we would also have remaining money so that we could actually hire the translator to come in and actually translate the meeting for people. Um, this is a system that Turk has been using for several years. They said it has been excellent. Um, down the line, we could buy um, additional transmitters um, that could translate in other languages um, so that people could simply turn the channel and hear a translation in Arabic if we had a translator in. This is also a tool that it would not be specific to chambers. It could go to other meetings. If we know someone's going to planning commission, there's going to be a large contingent of people who speak Spanish or another language. We could take this tool there and have those meetings individually translated for people who need that second language in the meeting. Um, those, the hard purchases out of that we anticipate to be right around $21,000. That would leave us with $4,000 of this initial $25,000 um, budget to um, hire translators. Uh, we had initially talked about also perhaps using that money to get documents within other departments uh, tra um, translated, but we realized that we don't have a system set up right now that we have someone who could actually follow those dollars, and but we will in the new fiscal year, and I'll get to how that can happen um, in, in a moment. Um, we also um, we also did a lot of work in terms of Title VI, and um, we ID'd many, many deficiencies in how Title VI is um, implemented throughout net throughout Metro so far. Uh, we looked at Title VI reports that are that are um, presented by each department every year and found deficiencies in training, in reporting, in follow-up, and things that, that we, we really can't have if we want to be um, in full compliance with federal law. Um, we also did extensive research with that the library system with Metro Health and with the juvenile justice system, all of which have very, very robust um, Title VI programs in place and do translation and interpretation on a daily basis. Um, and from discussions with them and their policies handbooks came up with a list of best practices that we believe can be implemented relatively simply metro-wide in all departments. Um, one of the best things that happened to me was when I was talking to uh, Mark Etherly with the Metro Human Relations Commission. Uh, the new executive director of the MHRC and the new board chair are very committed to getting a robust Title VI plan in Metro and they have actually have a budget request to hire a dedicated person for Title VI compliance. Um, I will be meeting with them in June to talk about, to present our draft to them to show them what we have developed um, and talk to them about how this can be implemented. And then I'll present also to their board in June um, and we can talk about ways that this can be implemented system-wide. Um, but this is something that could be given to them uh, that they could actually implement, that they would make sure it was in compliance. And and hopefully this new position will actually have legal teeth because right now though the MHRC is listed as the um, Title VI compliance organization or agency, whatever you want to call it, they have no legal authority to actually require any department to do certain things to be in compliance. And so hopefully with this new dedicated position, um, they will have that ability and they will be able to make sure that training is, you know, um, standardized throughout Metro, reporting systems are. Obviously in departments throughout Metro there are many um, that are very, very forward facing that this would be actually something that is very, very necessary day in, day out. Other departments perhaps less, but they still we still need to make sure that all departments are in compliance because they receive federal dollars. And given the amount of ARP money that we have distributed, all of which are federal dollars, right now no department is immune to having to um, follow those guidelines. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything and so I can I'd love to um, open the door to to questions. Um, yeah, Councilman Parker. Um, just in terms of, of what's um, the proposal today, like that was a lot to digest, and it all sounds great. Um, um, we we allocated twenty five k for this, right? Mm -hmm. And and I thought I heard like at, at one point we were talking about eighteen thousand and then twenty one thousand. No, twenty one hundred. I'm sorry. Twenty one hundred. Okay. Okay. That's that's. And that would bring it. Yeah. That would bring it to twenty one thousand. So it's eighteen thousand to yeah. to get the Spanish language captioning, and that's a three year contract that in, that um, that includes the one time cost for the hardware that we need, and that would have that for three years. Um, and then an additional purchase would be the simultaneous live translation equipment, the wireless transmitters and receivers and headsets, so that we would have that tool for individual meetings that could before we have the other in place. That makes more sense, and then so that left us about 4K, and and how 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 many how long does that budget allow us to do 
I mean, I guess our priority as this body is the Metro Council meeting. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how long how long would the four thousand dollar budget fund the actual translation labor? Well, no, the actual translation for for the captioning is included in the eighteen. Oh, cool. This is the additional four thousand would go for actually um, hiring actual translators who would be doing translations in meetings if we needed it. For example, in Present budget the meetings, budget. Okay. so that um, because we did talk about. Um, the necessity to make sure that we had some standards and, and policies about it, translators, so it wasn't necessarily advocates or people who had specific agendas as they were translating. Mm -hmm. So this would allow us to actually hire trans, trans uh, interpreters, excuse me, I keep getting the, using the words incorrectly. Translation is written, interpretation is verbal. It would allow us to hire um, interpreters to actually, like, say for the budget meetings that uh, CM Berkeley Allen is, is holding on the, the budget. Um, before the closed captioning is in place, this would allow um, Spanish speakers to be able to participate in the meeting with a live interpreter there, and they could hear the meeting and have it translated Thank simultaneously. You. And, and, and the last clarification I was hoping to get: so the 18 grand for that's for closed captioning or mm -hmm. verbal? That is closed captioning. And, and is that going to be on the live broadcast available, or will that be on YouTube like after the fact? That will be. It, it will be live in chambers during meetings on one of the television screens. Okay, cool. Um, it will be on YouTube afterwards because, as I said, right now we don't have the means to immediately yeah. put it up, yeah. but we will once we change the channel. Um, if we get the additional fifty thousand dollar allocation, we can change the um, one of the channels into a specific um, exclusive. Mm -hmm. Spanish language translation station. One of the things the MR, MHRC has done is they did a very, very comprehensive look into Metro about what we had in terms of language policy and Title VI policy. And they identified many deficiencies that we also identified. Um, and they identified many solutions. Additional thing, and they, they surveyed the community about what they run into in departments in terms of access and language access and communication. And they, they also identified um, the main languages in Metro that we would be required under law to provide translation for, um, interpretation for, um, Spanish being number one and actually Arabic being number mm -hmm. two. Um, this aligns with the same languages that came up with Metro schools. And in my draft report, which I will distribute to everybody, that, that information will be included there that's also available on the MHRC website on their reports on language access. But so 71% uh, of the people in Nashville um, can be called, uh, that's the main language, it's 71% of non-first non language English speakers speak Spanish, and the second is um, Arabic, so. And then, and then if I may, I had just one more mm -hmm. like, technical thing about how this is deployed. Um, does, does this package of funding or this, this deployment of these funds, does it get us to our cable viewers who watch things on Channel 3 to where they can push the SAP button on their remote and then it'll be there, or is that like maybe a future? Um, I believe that would be a future solution. Okay, just curious because I, I don't know what our viewership is like on Channel 3 versus the, the streams, yeah. but that would actually be an interesting thing to know. I don't think they actually get Nielsen, the Nielsen rating. It didn't get up that high. We're not competing okay. with uh, the big boys, okay? <clears throat> okay, cool. Thank you. Um, I think, Sam Hancock? Yeah, um, so back to the first item, the Spanish closed captions. You said that it's on one of the TVs in the chambers. Which TV? How will that be labeled? How will we? Um, I don't think we've got. I don't think we chose which television. If you have a suggestion, we're happy to. No, I, I just want to know so that we know what we're, you know, spending the eighteen thousand dollars on. Like, is it going to make them be in the lobby? Is it going to have them in the chambers? Um, you know, in the area where there's one bench or two benches, is it going to be? Well, no, there's two large television screens there. One of those TVs will be Spanish, and the other one is already English captioned. So you would just look at the screen, whichever. And then on the second one, to, to purchase equipment and then say that we could then use it to be um, used for interpretation if we have, if we hire those interpreters to come. Um, are we thinking about hiring the Spanish interpreters first or Spanish and Arabic at the same time? Like you went through it really fast and I'm trying to figure out with that remaining dollars how many hours that would be and, and what we can expect that would serve us instead of just saying, okay, we got it. And then, okay, we're out of money, you know, after two and a half months. Like when is it going to be prioritized? How many hours um, of interpretation would that remaining $4,000 cover? 
Um, I would have to talk to um, the interpretation. I don't have that dollar amount off my head, what it is per I hour. I cannot remember. We had a quote. It's expired now, but I think that it would be about the same amount because Metro contracts with a company at a certain rate, um, so I think the rate would stay the same. I cannot remember, but I, keep in mind that this just is for the in, through the end of this Interim. fiscal year. Yeah. So that's June 30th is, you know, the end date to these funds and then, you know. Yeah, right. so the amount, the amount has to be spent in this fiscal year. Right. Anything for, that's not yeah, spent. This is just funding through June 30th. Yeah. This Anything. is funding for the rest of the right, but if calendar we, year. If we invest in the equipment, then we're kind of making the investment that we're going to move forward with this. And, and I think we should know how much that would be we even moving you forward. The, I think that we can it's, get you. It's about oh, 300 okay. um, a meeting it will for three hours. So if it would we, probably be, we should estimate higher than that. Yeah, and that's, that's if you're going to have somebody in person at each meeting. So if you do kind of more of a, a, a as needed basis, that's going to impact the price too. But there are some sort of minimums, I think, that they require. Mm -hmm. So travel, yeah, like three hours, I think. $50 minimum. Right. So th those prices are probably. $300 an hour at a three hour minimum? Uh, Three hundred dollars for three hours, fifty dollar minimum. I think. I think. I don't think that that. I don't think the hourly rate is three hundred dollars. No, it was three hundred dollars for three hours. So about hundred dollars now. So you're already over the fifty dollar minimum if you're three hundred dollars, right? If it's if you get someone there for a full meeting, yeah. Okay, so we're talking like that would pay for thirteen hours or thirteen meetings, the four thousand dollars. Of three hours each. We don't have that many meetings right. left this year. Right. Yeah. And we also sometimes rent until five o'clock in the morning. So that would be. Right. But I was going to say, yes. So I think and this is an old estimate, so we would need to re up right. that estimate. And um, let's see. And I think we can get translation services less expensive than that. That's, that's and then you said that 71% of second language speakers in this area mm -hmm. are Spanish and second is Arabic. So how many percent does that? I'll have to pull up the document. Um, it drops off. It, it drops off fairly precipitously, yes. and hopefully, I quoted that um, statistic correctly. Um, it just, I think, help us prioritize how quickly we would want to move to a second language. Well, one of our initial things was if we had this money allocated this year and we did the Spanish translation, and again, getting the closed captioning is, we would get a three-year contract for that, for the, right. for the captioning. Um, then next fiscal year, which starts July 1, we could add a second language if need be. Um, but now we've talked about getting the television, um, the, the, the dedicated channel. Um, so that would... And so does the 18000 pay for... Three years, or is it? Yes, it pays for three years. years. That's awesome. Yes, plus the um, plus the initial uh, hardware purchase that we would have to, to make that happen. Mm -hmm. One, if I can just add two things, which we kind of talked about in our committee meeting yesterday, is that one feature of it I think is like if we can get the service in place somewhat reliably for Spanish translation or interpretation, it would also take some degree of effort just to let that community that speaks those languages know that it's available, right? In order to to, to boost that uptake. Um, it's not just going to be like one day we have it and they're like, oh, right. we've been looking for that. So it'll take some effort to develop relationships within that community to let people know that it's available. And, I, and that would probably be a good pilot model to go through first before we do a, a, another language, because we would have to also reach out to that community to let them know as well. We, That's number one. But another thing, too, is if we're going to go, I think, to a level at some point where MNN or whatever has an entire Spanish language channel for all Metro meetings, which I think we should get to, um, I, I would think that at that point that would become part of the ITS department's budget versus the council office budget Right. at some point. But uh, I think it's great that I like council, how you think. the council is kind of leading that as, as a pilot effort first to, to get us where we need to go. Well, I, sure. I know that in, in previous meetings where we've discussed this, we talked about, you know, how, you know when are we going to have these interpreters available on the floor? And I just wanted to recall what I, where I think that discussion landed. I think I might have had to leave that meeting. But anyway, we said, you know, there's there's cases where council members are going to know that, you know, this uh, public hearing, zoning public hearing or something is going to have a strong likelihood of, of having mm -hmm. um, Spanish-speaking folks want to come out and, and speak on it. Um, 
but then that we didn't want to leave it completely in district members' purview because um, obviously that could be abused. Not that I, there's any member of this body that I think would do that. So having some ability for the public to request it as well, if we're not quite where we're going to have every meeting yet, um, you know, I don't know if that's a rule that we would establish, but but allowing either the you know council members to request it or the public to request it, I think would would be the um, the fairest way, and I'm not sure exactly how you handle that, but um, uh. no, I think it, I think it's a good point. I, what I was going to ask was, um, um, so I, I get the captioning. I think that's a really good idea. And is it captioning everything that's being said, or is it captioning just the information that usually you would see on the screen? Everything is it, that's being said. Okay, so whatever is being said, it's it's a, so people can watch it who are looking for um, the the uh, translation uh, or into Spanish, they're reading it, it's on a caption going Correct. across the screen. Okay, so if you're in the chamber, you can actually watch it and understand what's going on Correct. if you speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. All right, the other thing, the um, the box with, with uh, interpretation services, with headphones, is that for, that, would that be for other meetings or is that, how would that work with council member, what council member Parker was talking about? in terms of who would be listening on the headphones? Um, someone who needed um, interpretation services. Now, we, well, if somebody requested interpretation services, then we could say, yes, we could hire an interpreter for you. If someone came into the meeting, into like, say, for example, a council meeting and said, um, my, my mother, they want to play the public hearing, they don't speak English, but I can translate, that we could simply hand them a thing and their family member could interpret, they were listening on the headsets with the receiver and they would understand and could then tell someone what they, how they want to respond to something. So just... Go ahead. Go just, ahead. just if, if, if I'm not an English speaker and I want a public comment, you, I walk up and you hand me a headset, I, I need a family member with me? No, no, no. How, well, think about how somebody right now does a public comment. Yes. I mean, if somebody doesn't speak English, they generally bring somebody yes. to be their own interpreter. If that person wanted to also participate in the meeting, they could listen on the headsets and have their family member interpreting for them if they so cho chose. Is, is this, I guess my question is, is um, when we say we need this service available for this meeting, um, let's say the budget, we, we know we want it for the budget, right? This is called the budget. Um, is there a person present on site or is this going through? On site. Like an internet connection to like a service where... On site. Okay. This is where we hire someone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. can that person stand at the podium and then translate what they just said? Uh, yes, it may be. Yeah. Instead, of, instead of just, you know, speaking into the thing that does it to the head pen. Yes. I mean, generally how this works, like how Turk uses it, it's like simultaneous translation at the UN. Someone speaking and based on Turk uses it, they have four channels and people can turn on I want it, Spanish, Arabic, whatever, right. and they can just hear what the, what's happening at the meeting. Right, but they could, right, right now they could hopefully read the, the captions so they can mm -hmm. see what's happening and then when they're ready to speak, they're going to speak in Spanish. So they need someone to interpret it to the body, not yes, they just could go, into the mic. It could go the other way also. It, right. it can go either way. Either way. But I think part of the impetus for this is we don't believe that we could have the captioning up in time for the budget. Right. This year. So we wanted um, to make sure we had something in place. And things, and also Which we could also reuse for Right. And it can be reused for any kind of uh, and it would be helpful for other languages moving forward because you're not gonna be able correct. to put captions like we're gonna have to bring in seventeen T V. Correct. It could be helpful in any language or it could be um, something that council members go into a community meeting could take if there's people in your community meeting who don't speak English, you have somebody who is interprets for a lot of the people in the community, the same thing. Um, it's just a very portable system that allows people to get a simultaneous translation of what's happening in front of them. So it makes it easy. And we were specifically thinking about budget and things right now that are really important that people want to participate in. And we know that we're not going to have the larger, any kind of larger system in place. We're not going to be able to do that in time for that. We don't want people to miss out. Can, we, can we do this other system? Can we get that in place before our budget hearing starts? Um, yeah. I mean, that's just a matter of getting approval and getting a purchase order and, and getting we, we could go that fast. Purchase. Okay, so let's say that we actually get that up and, and get that running. Um, I guess here's my question. Let's say we, we want it for budget hearings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this goes back to Councilmember Parker's question, and that is so we do we go ahead and hire an interpreter 
to show up at the budget meetings or are we, because we may not know if we need the services unless somebody tells us there's an issue coming up that, that we may have people in the audience that need some interpretation of what's going on. What happens if we get an interpreter and there's no one there that yeah. has trouble speaking English? Um, I mean, I guess in that case, um, my daughter is an interpreter, and if that's the case and no one is there, then they just dismiss the person and you pay whatever the minimum charge is for that, okay. for the interpreter. We have to check on Right. Check right, yeah. right, and I'm, um, I don't recall where we get our interpretation services, but... But also, again, like if, yeah. if it is available, hopefully, and we know that it is, then hopefully we could advertise that as a part of the proceedings for the meeting, right. so that folks know that we have this resource for you. I think that the point that I think you keep making, Brett, that, you know, there, there's, I think there's going to be some degree of, you know, we're going to have to build this infrastructure, and people are going to have to become aware that it exists for people to... To feel comfortable coming in here, and you know, <laughs> folks that otherwise wouldn't. Um, so, I mean, that will take time, and and and, and to to. So, I, I I guess the point I want to make is like, you know, if we don't see a lot of utilization on day one, let's let's not be discouraged. Right. Let's mm -hmm. let's keep it up. Yeah, and I also think that it depends on the issues that are coming on the floor. And I think you know, when we had an issue from your district, Councilman Parker, we, you know, you you likely knew in advance that. This number of folks that um, weren't English speakers were coming, but we didn't have that interpretation service. And like twenty five percent of my district is Hispanic Latina, and and I, I think I would know in advance if, you know, they had decided to all of a sudden start attending the council meetings. Um, but I'm I'm not saying that we'll know that about every single person, but we'll have a general feel. But it, but again, if we're not doing it universally, then I want some ability for the public to make sure that that is requested and will be available mm -hmm. because not that I think any member would, but you can obviously imagine a scenario where a member would know that those folks were coming but not request the thing in order for them to not be heard, which is a horrible, horrible thing. I'm not implying that anyone would do that, but it's, it's, it would be on the menu and we don't want that on the menu. Right. The, um, how many more, we're at the end of April, so we have Two meetings in, in May and two meetings in three meetings. No, wait a minute. This year we only probably are going to have two meetings in June. Two. We have the possibility of a third meeting right. if the budget doesn't pass at the second. Okay. So there's four meetings left in this fiscal year of the council. Um, how many budget hearings is? Um, do we remember how many that Councilmember Allen is going to have? Five, I think. I think I there are down. five days of the departmental budget hearings. One, two, three, four, five, five, five six, seven, eight, nine. Public hearing, but that's one of the council meetings. Um, and then we have uh, the, we have the work sessions. I don't four, know if anyone's going to want those. to yeah. show up for the work sessions. Okay. So they wouldn't be speaking; they'd just be listening. I, I like the the kind of the marketing aspect, but some of those budget hearings start probably at mm -hmm. four o'clock in the afternoon. They all start in the afternoon. Okay. Um, and in order to take advantage of the the interpretation services, at least. Um, now you'd actually have to come to the chamber mm -hmm. and, and get a set of headphones, I assume. that. And we, could we have, we'll have a number of headphones so that if there are a number of people that need the translation. Yes, if we get um, the 40 receivers, we could get 40 sets of headphones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not right. expensive headphones, but very inexpensive. Um, and we, you know, in most things you find that when people, when a service isn't there, people just assume the service isn't there and they, they're never going to ever show up and participate. But once the word does get out that the service is there, generally, um, you, you can be very surprised at how many people w wish that service was there, and you're going to see a, a huge increase in participation because once people know something is there, they realize this is now, I'm a part of this, I can be a part of this. So I think that's really important. And I think that's what will happen with this. And we can also, we can, um, you know, we can decide, like, you know, do, do we want to focus first on the council meetings here and then pick what we feel like would be the most important of the budget meetings, like, you know, to make sure that we stay within a budget or, you know, we could pick and choose in terms of what we think is important, but just so people in the budget time to hear what the council's doing and the debate on the council floor and when the, um, you know, when the chair's budget comes out and all those kind of things. And we have the public hearing, you know, and all those kind of things. I just think it's important that people hear we, and can hear and, and participate and come and be part of that. Um, that's to say we, we're not going to be able to get this, um, the closed captioning up in time yeah. for that. I mean, what do you all think? I mean, I, 
the public hearing, I think, is a must. I mean, I yes, think you yes. really do have it there. Yeah. Um, I would also say that, I mean, if we can have it available for the council meetings themselves, I think that would be a really good yeah. thing. Um, the budget hearings, you know, they can last for five, six hours, depending yeah. on how many people are going to be talking. And I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not. I'm not sure how many people, I'm not sure how many people yeah. actually come to those things anymore anyway. Right. Um, so, and that's something that we can just use our best judgment. Like, just historically, we just don't get a lot of people. We can... I mean, you could people. certainly, if there was something coming in that was interesting and some council members said, we're going to have people that we need the service for, you can certainly do it right. that way. But for the other ones, for the council meetings and for that public comment period, I, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. That's well, I was going to suggest for the <clears throat> budget public hearing, the big one, if we wanted to make an announcement at the very beginning, like if you're requiring a translation service, go ahead and move all those people to the front. That way, if we know we, you know, a three-hour per meeting, then we know let's keep it under three hours, and then once everybody who needs translation services are done, then we can dismiss the translator <laughs> and have those who wish to speak in English follow. Yeah, but some, some folks want to hear the whole thing. Right. right? Yeah, so they may, you know, if we're there for eight hours, they may have to be there for eight hours. Yeah, I think, if I can just jump in, the, the it looks like basically we, we couldn't utilize the entire budget if we tried. Um, that we have for this fiscal year that we're allocating here. Um, so, you know, I would say, you know, we if we go if we go over a little bit on the on the budget public hearing. I mean, I don't I don't see a few hundred dollars being like a major issue. I mean, think about how many staff we have in the room supporting one of those meetings to begin with. Like, you know, an extra two hundred dollars is not um, um, going to like break the bank or anything. And and. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I like the idea of, of, of maybe of putting folks up front, but also yeah, I think that the people want to hear the entire thing and the discussion and debate around it as well. I mean, is that am I understanding that correctly? That that, that will, will there be someone interpreting the entire meeting mm -hmm. for the headsets? Yeah, and and that's what that's what runs three hundred dollars for three hours. Um, I'm not sure where the or quotes come from. We have to get updated quotes. That's yeah. phenomenal. I mean, I mean, to me, that's a <clears throat> tremendous value. So it's a, um, a three-hour minimum. That's yeah. that's also. I'm not sure if it's simultaneous translation that it's quoted for. It might be. Um, what's the other I time? That was, I okay. thought that was the simultaneous one. Can okay. we can we record that feed? And, and the, so the that simultaneous it's translated it's would stay for eight hours. Like they'll have so, to have so a second. I don't know. Yeah, that we have to work for simultaneous translation right now. I thought that was the same. With it would involve an interpreter on site. So it's an interpreter on site, but that would be so basically somebody speaks and then it's translated and then. Somebody else speaks and it's translated. But, but simultaneous translation means the entire time people are talking, that person is speaking into the yeah. mic, and that's so, really expensive. Yeah, with it, it, it is okay. expensive. That's, that's based what I, on what, okay. I based, like, based on what we were told by um, the Metro Human Relations mm -hmm. Commission in the fall, it's a pretty expensive service and sometimes requires you to hire two people because they yeah. have to trade switch off. off. Oh, wow. It's a long meeting trip. Wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Um, well, I just we for me, I'm comfortable moving forward with what you've decided with your work that we're able to deploy in time for the public hearing. Um, and I think that if things are not perfect on the first go, then they are not, they're not perfect and we'll, we'll improve it. We can also get a smaller system. That is a 40 receiver system that would allow 40 people to listen at once. We can also get a system that's 15 and that's less than $700, you know. Or get two of those, which gives us 30 and two transmitters, so we could do another language if we needed to be for $1,400 plus the, the cost of headsets. Well, well I think we I could know. always get another language option add on later, and, and we could try to work out the kinks on this one first, or at least for the rest of this term. Yeah. <clears throat> well, okay, so let me. Um, so, Councilmember Parker sort of made the proper motion to go ahead and do both systems. Um, at this point, I would think that the system you're talking about is the one with the 40, with the 40, the one that we have been talking about, not changing it. Right. Okay. At least that's the yeah. initial one you yeah. talked about. So we would do that. Um, I'll consider Councilmember Hancock a second to this. Is that yes, right? I'll and second. All right, and then um, we have further discussion. My question was, do you want to? Uh, I know you want it for the public hearing. Do you want to try it if we can get it in place for the council meetings as well? Do you want to try this as it's kind of like a trial, or do you want to just do the public comment? The, the 
public hearing I mean, on the budget. That is how many weeks away? Uh, it's four or five. Yeah, um, we also need to figure, I, I don't, this is the first time I'm hearing about the, this, Tech, yeah. Yeah, this technology. Um, do we already have a contract in place for that or are we going to have to uh, procure that out, yeah. go through procurement? Um, a contract being is, does Metro already have a contract for this equipment, or are we going no, to have to no, go? No, no, no. So this we'll have is... to go through a procurement, and that's mm -hmm. going to take some time. And I don't know how long they take, but I know it's not quick. Is, the, is there <laughs> like a, is there a version that allows us to have someone present for the public hearing <laughs> to do like Workers' Dignity has done in the past mm -hmm. and stand there next to someone and just? do live interpretation I, as needed. I do think that that's what the consecutive translation quote covers is the someone stands up there to, to give their public comment and then the translator translates that into English. Is this, but, um, it's it, not, it would it's not my understanding that that's not consecutive that, that's right? consecutive translation. It's no, not it's simultaneous. Simultaneous. Got it. Simultaneous. That's what I was looking for. And then I Thank interpret you. it for you. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And then exactly. I interpret it for you. So it's that's something we could do right away without equipment, that's and then we could move forward with the RFP for. Yeah, it would just be a matter of yeah, yeah, getting someone the there. Quote and, and we already and have Metro with the has the contracts for that. Yeah. Okay. So, so the, the, go ahead. if I may, the, the eighteen thousand dollar piece, which is the largest piece of what's being proposed today, that is for the closed captioning Correct. for would you say thirteen months? Three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. um, um, do we want to separate? I mean, do, I, that sounds like a. We need to put that in motion today because it's it's going to be a big accessibility thing. Um, and then this question of the other question is like we seem to really want interpretive service available at the budget public hearing in June, right? I mean that seems to be the priority. So if, if that has to, if we have to have a deadline on that, we'd like to do it by then. Yes. And are we we Sooner Metro has possible, a contract but. where we can we can pay to get someone here to do that. The council budget can pay to get someone here to do that. So, I mean, uh, 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 would would anything in the work that you've done be screwed up if we said, let's move forward with the 18, let's table the headset piece for the meetings, and let's pay to get an interpreter here for the entire budget hearing for anyone that needs it. Pub public hearing. Public hearing. Yeah. Would that be appropriate? Um, if, if you think that that's appropriate, yeah. Um, if it's going to take a while in procurement and we feel like there's some value in having the simultaneous interpretation piece, I mean, that's just something you, you know you buy off Amazon per Turk. I re research with Turk, and it's like, so it's not a, um, just to have that equipment available for uses wherever. I mean. But we would still have to vote to approve it in order to begin that process. Correct. Right? And, and one more question, does the $18,000 Granicus add-on, would that just add on to the contract or do we have to also um, get a bid on that? No, that one we already can do. Okay. Or, I mean, can we put everything that you've suggested in motion, but then go just go ahead and plan on having a live person in the room who can do Spanish interpretation for anyone who needs it for the budget public hearing in June, because um, we've got that four grand um, so go ahead and order all the hardware you're talking about, right. the headsets. Go ahead and get the Granicus package for the subtitles, and then also y'all work with whoever that contractor is to, to make sure that somebody's here that can do interpretation on June. I don't remember which day. <laughs> I think that we can do that. We need to, we'll need to confirm the amounts. Okay. Uh, so we'll need to go back and confirm the amount for the live consecutive interpretation service for the budget public hearing. Um, and make sure that it is that it will fall underneath the. Um, I think there's four thousand for interpretive services left over after the twenty one hundred mm -hmm. for the equipment. Assuming that that is the cost, that it will cost us to get the equipment because we can't just go on Amazon buy it. And I don't <laughs> think that uh, we would be able to do that probably before the end of this budget cycle anyway, would we? The the purchase of the equipment. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it depends. They may be able to, it may be something that they already have a contract that exists that we can, you know, that we can utilize. Um, but I just don't know right now whether that exists. But we can contact purchasing it. Yeah, once you withdraw your motion, I'll, I'll withdraw my motion. And then do a new one. And I'll, I'll make a I'll motion. I'll my second. That we um, 
I guess, authorize the full 25000 the 18000 for the Granicus add-on for closed captioning, um, order the 40 headsets and the hardware associated with that function, and also utilize remaining funds to get an interpreter, uh, just a standing person with a body who does not require extra equipment, um, <laughs> to be present for the budget public hearing in June. And I had a ghost just ready to do it, man. <laughs> second. Okay, so you've heard the motion and the second. I think the only question would be, I mean, if you come back and it turns out through procurement that it's going to cost $10,000 to buy these 40 sets, and I'm not saying yeah. it will, but we have to go through procurement, we have to figure out how to do that, then obviously that's more than we have it on the budget for it. So the understanding would be you would have to come back to the executive committee and just say, we couldn't do it this year, but we could look at doing it right. next year. Mm -hmm. And we'd also have the option, as I said, they are smaller systems. If you can't get the full 40, you can get yeah. lesser system, but still have that capability for when we need it. Great. So to make but that work I, for I think it makes sense. So, so we can go ahead with the $18,000 for the three-year contract. You've already looked at that. We know we want interpretation services for the public comment period, for the public hearing on the budget. And then we want you to go ahead and start looking at the potential to purchase these other, this 40 headset operation with the understanding that we do have a limited amount of resources, right. but we can go ahead and you can start looking at that and then you can always let us know what you find out. Does that sound okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody okay. understand the motion? Yes, sir. Other questions? Ms. Lee, any other questions? Good. You're good? All right, ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those no? Any abstentions? Great. Okay. The motion passes. Um, all right. So let me see what time is it. Oh, okay. We got two minutes. All right. <clears throat> I think I can cover the other two things in two minutes. <clears throat> uh, the travel. Um, we had authorized funding for all council members to travel in case they wanted to go to a particular conference. I will say I think I always think that's really important. Um, particularly um, the next group, National League of Cities. When you go to these conferences, you learn quite a bit. Um, and you bring back ideas that sometimes we hadn't thought through, particularly if you steal ideas from other cities. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage people to do that. If they, uh, it's only we only have two months left in the fiscal year, but we um, a lot of members haven't taken advantage of it. So we probably just let, need to find out if anybody else is going. Uh, the money, it's fine for the money to go back into the general fund if it's not used. But um, I remember going to a lot of National League of Cities conferences, and you learn quite a bit. That's why I put the other thing on there. National League of Cities, I know uh, Councilmember Hurt talked about it. We are hosting in 2026, particularly for those members who may be coming back. Um, it's a good time to get involved with that because that's going to fall in the next term. And they're going to need people to do things. I mean, they're, they're coming here. They voted to come here. Um, so that means getting in, involved in NLC, uh, playing a role if you want to, and also uh, preparing to, actually, they need people to pick topics and address them. And typically, we don't have a lot of people that go when they're outside conferences, when they're not here, and we don't have people that present. But obviously, there's a number of ideas floating around in this city, and I would encourage you all to get involved in those types of things, and, and uh, Rosie can help you with that. Where is the conference this year, did you say? It's in city. Kansas City. Yeah. Actually, the early bird um, fee is up June 30th of this year. All right. So at the at the at, at one of the main meetings, I'll remind people that they can. You can certainly go to any of those conferences, but National League of Cities is obviously coming here, and it's tied into NBC Leo. So we would encourage you to come something like that. If, if if a conference occurs, an approved conference occurs in August of 2022, would that just end up being on the next fiscal year mm -hmm. for the travel? Okay. Yeah. Unless you'll change it, you know. Unless. What? Depends on when you pay for it. Oh, okay. So Can you pay and for whether the you've already in um, and whether you've already uh, accessed your budget, your <coughs> allocation for this year. Okay. Yeah, if you've already spent your allocation this year, right. you'd have to wait to see if the money gets appropriated right. for next fiscal year. Right. Then you could ask. But if, if you, you haven't done it this, this year, year yeah. you haven't done it, and you pay for it this year, then you would have to. So if I bought my registration and airplane ticket. I could go ahead and... Right, we've got to get reimbursed okay. and get, get you paid back by the end of the June. Got it. And where are you going? And is it a local progress that's on the list now? Oh, is it a nice. possibility to get 
those of us who may have spent money, kind of what's left in our allocation for the year? You can if it, on our approved, um, yeah. He wants to True. know what's left. I think. Yeah, I want to know what's left. Like if I want oh, to I've do got, something. I've got a list. Uh -huh. Yeah. So y'all yeah. need to know what what you've got left. The um, yeah, this was authorized. I, I think it's always important because it's the best way to learn. I mean, we, we learn from each other, obviously, but there's lots of other stuff going on around the country, and we like to go out and steal good ideas and bring them back. So it's a, it's a good thing. It's not a lot of money. It's, it's limited to, by council members, so it's very little expenditures. I'm just letting people know if they're watching. It's very little, but we haven't spent it, and I, I want to make sure. And it's fine, again, for it to go back into the general fund, but um, it's the best way to bring innovative ideas in many ways back to this city. And we, uh, we have a lot of issues going on. We can certainly use there anything we can find that, that works. So that's why I left it on there, just to make sure. And nationally, a city. And we have yeah. presented at conferences and served on national committees. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a, a tremendous example, Councilmember Hurt. I mean, that's a big deal. National head of a entire association, yeah. and they're and they're bringing the conference here. Former Councilwoman Johnson was the first to be elected to the national board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I've been on a regional. I'm not on it anymore for four or five years. Councilwoman Hurt, Councilwoman Dow. Um, various uh, national committees you can serve on as well too. And I re really would encourage people, We obviously the pandemic is still around to some extent, but people are starting to come back out. Take advantage of that mm -hmm. because first of all, it gets you more involved nationally, you learn a lot more about what's going on, but you meet people from all over the country and, and the world and you find out what's going on and you can be really helpful. So just remember that. Um, that was it. The main thing was to do with the translation services. Thank you to you and your committee for doing that. That's really important. Um, anything else that we need to talk about today? Um, again, remember, um, we're supposed to be there at 9.15 for those who are getting to the state of Metro address. 9.15? Well, that's what we were told. If you get there at 9.30, we'll let you in. Okay? We've got a seat saved for you. Maybe. The, the mayor's office requested 9.15. Is that right, Mr. Jamison? For hair and makeup, yes, sir. Hair and makeup, yeah. Well, I have to get there at 8.30 for mine. It takes me a little bit longer. Um, program starts at 10, uh, Southeast Community Center. And, um, and then remember, next week, um, our meeting is on that Thursday, May the 5th. Cinco de Mayo. That's right. Come ready. Uh -huh. okay. Anything else? Anything else? Got it? Okay. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.